today, I'm going to talk about exercise in times of crisis. The objectives of this lecture is to discuss the proper exercises for adults and to discuss musculoskeletal injuries in change of work style during the pandemic and to recommend exercises which are safe and effective. Physical activity and exercise are cornerstones of healthcare. It is therefore essential that physical activity and exercise are key components of current and future pandemic plans, particularly for vulnerable groups. Why exercise? As adults, we want to stay fit, stay thin, have those six-pack abdomen, and have to have that beautiful body so that we would be able to wear bikinis. As we grow older, goals would change. We want to prevent chronic lifestyle-related disease, such as heart disease, and to want, to don't want to have death. But most of all, physical activity improves mental health, especially in these times of pandemic. So what are physical activity guidelines for older adults and adults? So adults are those who are 18 to 65, and older adults are those who are from 65 and above. They have the same uh, exercise prescription or guidelines which is a moderate intensity exercise of 150 to 300 minutes per week divided into five to six days. What is moderate intensity? Moderate intensity exercises are those exercises where you could still talk while doing the exercise, or you could have vigorous intensity aerobic exercise of 75 to 100 minutes per week. So what's vigorous intensity exercise? This is These are exercises that you do when you could not talk anymore and you are panting, so like running or sprinting, jumping jacks. And there are additional health benefits if you do exercise more than 300 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity a week. Included here is the strengthening exercise of moderate or greater intensity of twice a week. But for older adults, you should have balanced exercise because they are predisposed to fall. So you have to teach them or have balanced exercises. They should be physically active as it allows. And remember that some physical activity is better than none so that they could do 10 minutes of exercise instead of a regular 30 minutes of continuous exercise. Now, the pandemic has brought us so many changes in our lives. We have to have vaccination. Second is the food because of the decrease in work. There's less of uh, food stability and those who are disabled will have difficulty in having their rehabilitation. And for adults, gyms are closed because gyms are areas where you would generate your aerosol where your coronavirus are present. So what do we do? We could do your jogging, which some people would not like. And now we are dependent or dependent on your laptop, your YouTube. So this is the common setup that we have. We have two computers and we have our computer chair, which is the most important furniture because if we have poor chair, then we would have a lot of low back pain. What happened during the COVID pandemic? There's a decline in the functioning of older adults. There is suboptimal management of acute or chronic illnesses because we do a lot of tele telemedicine and sometimes the management is wrong. And if the patient goes into the hospital, they have already a lot of symptoms. There's also suboptimal access to rehabilitation services, especially for older adults, which would need rehabilitation. And because of being saying working at home, we have physical inactivity. So what are changes when we are immobile or we're physically inactive? There's a decrease in our cardiorespiratory fitness by 17, 7 to 15% per day. So you would see now that when you walk, you tire easily compared before when you were going to school. Now there's also a decrease in muscle volume of about 6 to 8% per day so that your muscle strength will decrease. And there's a decrease in the function of muscles as evidenced by decreased muscular strength and power. Now, especially us, like the Philippines, the countries with longer restriction may present greater deterioration in the people's population health. 
So remember that when we do not exercise and there's a decrease in our cardiorespiratory fitness, there is an 18% increase in cardiovascular disease or having heart attack. And there is a decrease in 15% in surviving. So exercise is very important. Now, now, in the pandemic, YouTube is the best source of exercise, but trustworthy resources are needed. So walking could be cheap and easily accessible form of exercise, but older adults are not allowed to go out of their house albeit go to the malls, except for now. Now, it does not provide people with sufficient strength or balance challenge. So you could have a decrease in balance and a decrease in strength with just walking. Now, this is a walking video by Leslie Sanson that could be seen in the YouTube. And Leslie Sanson would have some strengthening exercises as well. So you should remember that regular exercise in a study has said that it may help prevent against severe COVID. So these are just some of the websites where you could do strengthening, strength training and balance for older adults. So you could have this so that they would have uh, instruction on how to do it. Now, these are the exercises that should be done. First is that you should do your sit to stand. And then you would go step up and step down. And then you could have your leg lift and then your hip abduction exercise. It should be performed 10 repetitions three times per week. Now, remember that every active minute counts. Break sitting time with two minutes of walking every 20 to 30 minutes. So when you are sitting for a long time, after 30 minutes, you should go walking. You could do taking the stairs or short walk in a daily schedule, even within the house, within the house. Now, how about for adults? I know that walking will be a bore to all of you. So what we have now is your high intensity interval training. So what's a high intensity interval training? These are repeated exercises at high intensity for 30 seconds to several minutes, separated by one to five minutes of recovery. So what does it mean? So I do jumping jacks for 30 seconds, and then I rest for one to five minutes. I could do my burpees for 30 seconds and then do have a rest for one to five minutes. It's complex concept for those unfamiliar to exercise. And it could be aerobic or strength training. So, for example, for aerobic training, it would be jog walking or uh, sprinting and then walking or jogging, then sprinting. In strengthening exercise, it would be your burpees or jumping jacks and then rest. Now, they would have the same cardiovascular benefits with moderate intensity exercise. Now, these are the examples of your a high intensity exercise. You could do your alternate lunges. You could do your plank tucks, then jumping jacks. You could have pipe push up, mountain climbing, jumping jacks, triangular push up, then burpees, then uh, jumping jacks again, planks, and then left lateral planks and right lateral planks. So what you would do is you would do 30 seconds of this, then rest, and then another set of 30 seconds and rest and then another 30 seconds. Then you do the second exercise. So this is your circuit training, and it will be both a strengthening program and a cardiovascular program. But remember that the high-intensity interval training burns more calories and increases your uh, post-exercise fat oxidation and, and energy expenditure, meaning after exercise, you still burn calories more than a steady-state exercise. So what does steady-state exercise mean? Steady-state exercises are those exercises which you do continuously, like jogging, which the heart rate doesn't increase more. But here, in your high-intensity interval training, you increase your heart rate during the exercise proper, and then you rest, which will lower your heart rate. But remember that injuries for those beginning any exercise program 
is prevalent, especially for elderly and sedentary patients. So we had been sedentary for a long time, and so that doing high-intensity interval training will make you prone to injury. And some types of exercises are contraindicated in certain patient population. For example, if I have low back pain, I cannot do jumping jacks because 30 seconds of jumping jacks could cause back pain. Uh, back pain, okay? Now, what are injuries in the high-intensity training? You could have muscle strain, shoulder injury. Could be, you could have painful, painful shoulder, which is, uh, could be a rotator cuff strain or impedance syndrome. You could have anterior knee pain, which would be due to patellar tendinitis. And you could have back injuries, which could have paralumbar strains or herniated discs. And tennis elbow for the, uh, if you carry weights or you carry body, body weight. Now, remember that prevention is better than cure, especially in this time of pandemic where you don't like to go to the hospital uh, because of the fear of contact, contacting, contracting uh, coronavirus. So the effect of pandemic because of the lockdown, there's increased time on technology-based activity where you would have prolonged sitting and because gyms are closed, you would have a lot of physical inactivity. So prolonged sitting, sitting in front of the computers for more than 8 to 10 hours could cause a lot of injury. You could have neck pain, and that could be because of a muscle strain, or you could have pain, no, uh, neck pain, and the pain will go to your arm, which means that there are, there's a nerve that it is impinged. You could have also wrist and hand pain. You could have carpal tunnel syndrome, where you would have numbness or tingling sensation on your thumb and first and second finger, or you could have pain on your tendon, so that when you bend your fingers, it, you have a difficulty in opening it up. And then you could also have back pain, which could just be a muscle pain, but you could have a lumbar radiculopathy. What does that mean? Again, there's pain going down your leg, meaning that nerve is also impinged. So we did a scoping review on musculoskeletal injuries of work from home employees. Now, what are the most areas involved? It would be neck pain, low back pain, and shoulder pain. So you have all of this because of sitting in front of the computers for a long time. So what are factors associated with musculoskeletal pain? Number one, it is correlated with workstation ergonomic suitability, your desk, your chair. And back pain is significantly correlated with time sitting in front of your computers, weekly frequency of physical inactivity, and perceived stress during the pandemic. So what happens when you have prolonged sitting, the muscles of your abdomen and back will not be activated. So if it's not activated, there will be overload in your intervertebral disc and your ligaments, and that will cause low back pain. So ergo, what is important is to really have strengthening of your back muscles. So that would be if using your core exercises. Now, musculoskeletal pain in pre- and post-pandemic period, there is a significantly high low back pain among those who stayed and worked from home compared to those who continued working status quo during quarantine, quarantine periods. And the severity of the pain is significantly intensified among those who work from home, which technically means all of us. So proper desk mechanics or sitting mechanics is what is needed now. So your foot should be fit flat on the floor or in a resting footrest. Your knee should be bent and should be three, three inches away from the table. You should have a swivel chair and your back should be supported by a lumbar support. Your elbow should be close to your body at flex at 90 and the wrist should be in line with the forearm. It should not be extended this way or flexed this way. And then your eye, the computer or the uh, screen should be at eye level. You should not bend your neck or extend your neck. 
and there should be a proper uh, monitor left the arm's length away and you should use a wrist support. What are exercises that could be done during sitting? So you could do with this on every hour on the hour. So you could do your wrist stretch, shoulder shrug, shoulder stretch, back stretch, corner stretch, neck stretch, heel and toe raise, and sit, sit exercises. Now, William flexion exercises are exercises that you do for your back. You could do your pelvic tilt or you could do knee to end. You could do knee to chest exercise and double knee to chest, which is perform 10 repetitions per day to prevent low back pain. So these are my references. And with this, I would say maraming salamat po. Stay safe. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, with this TED Talk.